Now guys, one of the biggest questions I get asked on social media or any social platform is how do I fish a frog? Well today, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about. How to fish a frog. As you can see, they do catch fish. And now that this fall topwater bite is turning on, it is a great time to talk about Mr. Kermit. Let's get this guy back in the water real quick. All right, buddy, thanks for playing. You look a little skinny, you should probably eat some more frogs. One of the things that I love the most about frog fishing is it doesn't have to be complicated. The tools needed for this are fairly basic. You just need a very stiff or semi-stiff rod, some heavy line, and a fast reel. Now what I fish with is a seven foot three heavy rod. It's got a pretty good backbone to it, really helps set that hook. 50 pound braid, most people like to use like 80 or 65, something like that. I prefer 50. And then a fast reel. This would be a 9.3 to one gear ratio. I wouldn't fish with anything less than a seven to one reel. Whenever that fish eats the lure, you need to be able to get them out of the cover that you're fishing rather quickly because they will wrap you up in it. As for frogs, there's really only one that I like and it is the Booyah Pad Crashers, specifically the miniature one. That's my all time favorite. Really walks well, we'll talk about that later. And uh, it's not too overbearing. It looks like the perfect snack for a fish. We'll talk about modifications to the frog and the different things that I do to make fish eat it later on. But for now, we're just gonna focus on how do we fish it, where do we fish it, and we'll go from there. So where do you fish a frog? What kind of cover do you fish with a frog? As you guys know, this is one of my favorite places to throw top water any time of the year. Cypress trees always seem to hold fish, especially shallow ones. This whole place is pretty shallow and there's a lot of fish that live around this kind of cover. You have bushes over here. Bushes are a great place to throw a frog. Uh, lily pads, grass mats. If we had grass mats, I'd probably throw it there. Uh, wish we did, we do not over here on Kentucky Lake anymore. But just cover, anything that you would be semi afraid to throw a regular lure into like a crankbait or something, that's the perfect place for a frog. Especially if there's like a film on the water like this has over there. That's an awesome place to throw it. It kind of creates a little track line for the fish. They can find your lure, really hone in on it better than they can just sitting out here in the open water. How you fish your frog is much like how you rig it. You can make it as easy or as hard as you want to. But one of the most important things that I found in fishing a frog is building up some kind of cadence. They really like some kind of cadence. It helps them follow it. And if you can make the frog walk, make that little zigzag pattern for whatever reason, fish just really hate it and they try to annihilate it, which is really awesome. So walking a frog. Walking a frog is something that took me a while to figure out myself. Uh, I don't use a long rod for it. You don't need a long rod for it. The longer your rod is, the harder it is to actually make the frog walk. So what you want to do is get kind of a semi-slack line. You don't want that line taunt. If you have it taunt, you're just pulling the frog. You're not really making it walk side to side. Once your line is kind of you know loose, there's a little bit of slack in it, you just give it a couple little jerks, just like this. Those jerks make that frog walk back and forth as long as you keep slack in it, which is, you know, really how you make the frog walk. If you don't have slack, you can't make the frog walk very well at all. And that little zigzag walking motion is what drives fish absolutely crazy. And you want to build a cadence with how you make it walk. You may make it walk three or four times and pause it, or you could just keep it really, you know, gentle. That's one of my favorites. In my opinion, the more subtle your frog is, the more, you know, less there is to it, the more it really messes with those fish and makes them want to come and eat it. So with frog fishing, I think less is more, but there are a lot of instances where they want it faster. Some of my bitter fish I've caught while I'm just burning this frog in real quick, giving it a little pause and then moving it some more. Really drives the fish crazy. And if you can manage to do that while keeping that that cadence that zigzag motion then you're gonna hook up with a lot more fish one of the reasons I like the pad crasher so much is because it walks the dog really good it has a bass boat style uh, body which makes it go back and forth really really easily 
and you can impart a lot of movement without actually moving the frog very much at all. You can almost make that thing walk in place and whenever the fish see a disturbance like that they will come up and just obliterate it. It's pretty cool. So to me personally, fishing a frog is super, super easy. But the one thing that still gets me today, even after doing this for years, fishing a frog for years, is the actual hook set. Getting that fish on the hook is semi-difficult because there's a waiting period that's usually involved. Whenever you have a fish come up and strike a frog as vicious as they do it, it's really hard to sit there and wait. But that's one of the things that you have to do to ensure that they actually have the frog in their mouth. And there's a couple ways that I try to uh, make sure that the fish actually has the bait. First thing I do is I look for visual clues. I look to see if my bait is still there. If I know my bait is not there, then I know that the fish probably has it. At that point, I do one of two things. I either count to three as slow as I possibly can in my head, and then I lift up real hard, set the hook. We'll talk about that in a second. Or I raise the rod really slowly and I feel for that tension, that movement of the fish with the frog in its mouth. And if I feel that tension, then I go ahead and I set the hook. Setting the hook is also something a lot of people tend to have problems with. A lot of people want to set it kind of sideways, like a sideways hook set. But what you really want to do is set the hook straight up and down. Reel up the slack, make that line semi-tight, and just give it a good send. Yank up on it. Those hooks are on top of the frog, so you're going to have to lift up in order to expose those hooks and get them in the fish's mouth. That's what you're trying to do, and there's only one real good way of doing that. Every once in a while you might get lucky doing it from the side, but if you want to be 100% sure every time that you're going to hook that fish correctly, you want to lift up and down at a pretty, uh, pretty, I would say aggressive manner. You know, you kind of, you kind of, you got to kind of put some umph into it, make sure they feel it, you know what I mean? So, uh, you don't have to exactly just rip their face off. But a good, steady, strong hook set is really what you need more than anything. There's three things I do whenever I modify my frog. First off, I trim the skirt. The way I like to trim it is I'll take one section of it, put it right there, and then cut it along the line tie. This one's a little bit long. And then the other one, I do the same thing, but I cut it a little bit shorter. That creates some drag whenever it's in the water, and it helps it walk a whole lot better. You can walk a frog 10 times better. Even one of these pad crashers that already walks pretty well, you can make walk even better. Really great side to side motion with that. One well, of the other things I do is I'll pull the hook out or I'll open it up like that and stick some little BBs in there. That creates a racket. It's like a rattle and uh, really gives those fish something to key in on. So they, they can hear that. They can hear those little BBs in there. And then for open water situations only, I'll take some braid and a treble hook and actually tie the treble hook right here on the bottom of the frog. That really helps increase hookups if they're coming up and short striking it in kind of open water. They'll usually get that little hook in there and uh, you'll, you'll catch your fish. Really helps improve it, uh, your catch ratio. Usually with a frog, you don't have a great catch ratio. Today I'm uh, like 10 out of 10. I've caught quite a few fish and haven't filmed all of them. So guys, that's, that's pretty much it. You don't have to make frog fishing complicated. It's one of the best ways to catch fish in the fall and uh, it, it's fun. There's, there's nothing else that's really quite like it. Anything topwater, it, it's just hard to find another lure that can really recreate the kind of excitement you get with something like a frog. But that's pretty much it. Everything's going to be linked in the description. All the frogs, the rods, everything that I use for topwater frog fishing, it'll all be in the description as usual. I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Ken Arnold Fishing, and I'll see you right here next time.